Hi, Ash James here, Director of Practice and Development at the Chartered Society of Physiotherapy. Now this message is to articulate some recent changes and some immediate changes that we're making to our approach to PRP therapy here in the UK. Now to be very clear from the start, the CSP's position is that there are no appropriate circumstances where physiotherapists should be preparing, injecting or utilising PRP therapy with patients and therefore, effective immediately, physiotherapists should stop utilising PRP with their patients. Now the reasons behind this are complex. I'm going to try and articulate some in this video, but there is of course more information on the website. Now, this is a result of conversations with multiple key stakeholders over the last few months. They were triggered, you may remember a few months ago, there was an article that came out in Frontline surrounding PRP and training courses, which caused us some concern. That triggered the team to look more in more detail at the legal and regulatory frameworks that surround PRP. That led us to conversations with the MHRA, who are the medicines regulator here in the UK. The MHRA have confirmed this week that they would, based on the use of physio, based on the use of PRP by physiotherapists here in the UK, they would class it as a medicine. Now that is absolutely key. That classification as a medicine by the MHRA means that we are physiotherapists would be subject to the marketing authorization and manufacturing licensing that exists here in the UK. And we do not have an exemption from that license to be able to utilize PRP. That puts us outside of legal and regulatory frameworks to be able to continue to use PRP. Now, in other circumstances, using unlicensed medicines is okay by supplementary prescribers under the supplementary prescriber regulations. But because of the lack of exemptions in the marketing and manufacturing licenses, it means that no physiotherapist is able to utilize PRP. Now, this is a difficult message, as I've said before, but but a really important one for members to understand and make sure that you follow from now on. Now, we've had word from the PLI provider and subsequently MPLC who work with the PLI provider that retrospectively claims will be honoured and will fall within PLI coverage. If anybody has any other questions or queries, then please do get in touch uh, and myself and the team will be around to answer any questions. Thank you very much.